Good day, folks. No hanging about this morning. We're straight in on the vlog. Always adjusting the camera. Always in the wrong place. So I'm going to get on with the two coolers that we picked up yesterday, or the two components of the cooler. But first, I'm going to show you the joy key. So this is the spicy stuff. This is what I thought was going to be naga. Turns out it ain't very hot after all, but mm -mm, it's freaking Moorish. It's quite brittle though, so I imagine I might have over dried it a touch. This had 10 hours. The less spicy version only had six. So I think we're figuring it out. But yeah, this will be, oh it is hot. This will be what I'm snacking on all day. I bet you're all jealous out there because it's, it's good stuff. So now what we're going to have to do is put down the distraction and get focused on this. That's right. That's right, we've got all of this, <clears throat> excuse me, to clean out. All of this verdigris, obviously come off the copper. And while we're cleaning it, we'll turn it on as well. And if these copper coils begin to get really cold, then bingo, we've hit the nail on the head. We've got a working unit. And I'll also get some water and I'll run it through the, uh, what's it called? Heat dump. And if the heat dump is secure with no leaks, then we're onto a winner. We can get it rigged up. And quite frankly, all I need is some pipe work and some fittings and it shouldn't take us too long to get at least um, one of the cold rooms chilling. And then I can go ahead and order the heat exchangers for the rest, the fans, the STC 1000s and all the other control components for us to build controllers for each individual uh, cooling chamber. So over the next week or two, we'll get the cold room complete. But this is the main component. So I've taken the whole unit to pieces. We've got all of the covers off down here on the floor, which means that I can take them up to the sink and give them all a good scrub and a clean. It also means I've been able to get down here, have a look at the quality of the electrical connections. It looks like there might be an old redundant um, thermostat in there, which they're not using anymore. If we come round to the back, this is the difference between the water cooled systems and the uh, internally cooled systems. This one has a plate heat exchanger, you'll recognize one of these. So what that's doing is exchanging the heat from the compressor, basically the heat exchange side of the refrigeration system. And that heat's going into the glycol and the glycol then goes out to the external unit and dumps it outside. And then the cooler glycol comes back to exchange heat again. Well, it's very much like your car engine radiator, but instead of oil exchanging heat with water, uh, we have um, our 134 refrigerant, effectively. This side, we've got a March May pump. That March May pump is what recirculates the glycol through these two pipes here and off to the exchanger. And around the front, we've got the glycol tank and the on-off switches. And then uh, over on the exchanger, I've pulled it apart and the parts are dated 2016 inside, so this isn't a very old piece of kit at all. So effectively what we've got is a 24 volt, 
a 24 volt fan which blows or draws air through basically a radiator panel and uh, as you can see it's an MF uh, 2016 so this isn't a very old unit at all so I'm just about to pop some water in here and if this is watertight then the heat exchange is golden um, all we have to do then is plug that bad boy in and fingers crossed that ain't going to be a problem either and we'll clean all the panels we'll reassemble and uh, I think it's all going to live basically down here behind behind the new tanks so it'll be easy for me to access should I need to get in there and check on it yeah we've got a lot of junk at the minute stainless for the uh, kitchen so under the stairs there is probably the safest place for it to live it's not going to get beaten up and I can gain access just by pulling that one tank out I think that's where we're going to put it anyway I might end up putting it on the other side depending on whether I want to put a cooler over here to chill these tanks or not we'll see so the next job for me as I say is get down and dirty scrub everything up plumb it up test it for leaks and then uh, we'll fire it and give it a test run and see if it forms an ice bank right we've got to fire it up I brought forward the test before I cleaned it because I opened up oh, I sprayed some water in here and it looks like we have a leak on one of these fittings so potentially I've been lied to so this may be no good uh, hopefully this is and we can just replace the um, radiator system if I can do that bingo I might even be able to fix it with a bit of solder the pump works for the glycol tank that's for sure I've just unplugged it down here that's this but the March May pump definitely works I saw it spurt a little bit of old glycol out of the system and looking down here that is like ice cube to the touch so it looks like the compressor works as well so this section which is for a brand new one 600 quid for a reconditioned one 300 quid even if we just get that section for 75 pound I'm actually happy but it didn't have to lie did he if there's a leak in that just say how oh, there's a leak in that you know I'd have still taken it just pisses me off why do people have to tell lies so I've spent about half an hour trying to find a replacement um, heat exchanger. This is a liquid to air heat exchanger to slide into the heat dump. I think the heat dump's going to be fine. We can use that. But it's only a 12, 24 volt DC fan in there. But this bad boy was leaking at the, uh, yeah, that point there. So basically I just wiggled backwards and forwards this section and it all came out. So it, it split around that. Obviously it's been put under load at some point and broken off. So I think that this is kaput. Uh, but looking at that, that ain't a million miles away if you think about it uh, to what we've got here. So I don't see why I can't substitute this out, which cost me 21 quid on eBay, for that. And we just drop that bad boy in instead. I mean, surely that'll do the job. There are less, there's less thickness to it, less depth. But you've got more, a bit more surface area. I think that might just work. The only trouble I'm having with these figuring out how to connect from these large 34 millimeter OD tubes now the way I've done it in the past is get a bit of flexible hose like that sort of squeeze it onto the end hose clamp it and then on the other side uh, basically yeah you see what I've done here basically just hose clamp a huge copper fitting in there and then put the required reducers on to get us down to 
15 mil copper pipe or poly pipe, whatever we decide to use. So I'm thinking that's the cost effective way. That will fit into the unit so it'll look better, but who gives a shit about aesthetics, frankly? Um, and then, of course, I can buy half a dozen of these. We can put one in each cooling chamber for the cold room over there and one for the heat dump and then one well we can buy we can just buy them off the shelf actually if we need any spares at least we know that we're just changing out like for like so it looks like we're gonna have to go to the drawing board a little bit with this one but I'll just test the fan make sure the fan works on the heat dump easy change though if it doesn't 24 volt DC fan this works it cooled so I'm going to clean it up, clean all the fairings, put all them back on the machine and we'll site it where we want to and we can start piping it up. So we can start piping the cold room up and uh, then we can decide where we're going to site this heat exchanger and how we are going to replace that, um, that coil. I also have to test out this motor which is the research motor for the uh, for the heat dump um, for the ice banks should I say so that would be recirculating the glycol for instance and then maybe even cut out cut out the thermostat on there that little section there and add an STC 1000 so we can set it to sort of minus 10 or whatever we want to do and use that as a glycol bath so I've actually come back to the drawing board with this. I can't leave things alone sometimes. I've got some 10 mil pipe here and that's the same diameter as the pipe that we've taken off here. I've also got a pipe flaring kit if I need to. So I'm thinking about just zipping that off there, popping, it does, it fits in. Popping that in there, maybe that in there. I wonder. I've lost my patience with it. I've tried several times to like uh, resolder certain joints and it's worked. The joints that I've attacked, I've managed to seal back up, but you're chasing your tail. You seal one solder joint up and something blows somewhere else and then something blows somewhere else. And I'm on my fourth one now and I can see something hissing down here. So I'm not gonna bother. I'm gonna actually see if we can figure out how to set up that car radiator and we're just going to replace this matrix with a car radiator if anyone knows where i can get some of these from with copper pipe outlets please share with me because uh, i could really do with uh, finding a decent supplier for these uh, i can get car radiators for about 25 quid so it has to be in that ballpark if you know uh, but yeah what a shame because the good thing about these is they are 15 mil pipe outlets, whereas the car rads don't. Right, I've wasted enough time on that. I'm going to get that uh, ice unit working. The, uh, you know what I mean, the big green box. This one. So I've got a few jobs done. 
but not exactly 100% what I wanted to get achieved. So at the moment I'm just topping up the glycol reservoir for this unit with water because what I want to do, you can see I've got it all cleaned out and reassembled, what I want to do is drain out what uh, is in the glycol tank because it's filthy um, and also clear out what's in the in the glycol pump and the glycol pump is a March May pump believe it or not so uh, I'm going to run a cable over here this will turn on enough to uh, want to keep the compressor on and start the whole thing cooling so I'm not going to be doing this on and off, on and off. What I'll do is uh, just plug it in. We'll see if we can guide this pipe to spray all the glycol down there. And uh, then I'll just come back with a jug of water and fill it up again to get any bits out. So let's see how we get on with this. There we go. That was green. Showing the presence of glycol and it's actually really warm immediately. So that tells me that straight away it was exchanging heat. Oh, would you look at it now, Jerry? Just check her out. So we've got the glycol on a quick loop because we've got no heat exchanger here. This warms up really quite quickly. I've changed it once because it was getting about the pipe was getting soft. I'm not leaving it on all night. You'll also be pleased to know the top pump here, um, that's the glycol recirculation pump or the return and flow for the beer python. That works nice and powerful. I'm pleased with that. So actually what that's doing now is giving it a good clean and spinning all this ice bath around. So once this is filled with glycol, it will create an ice bank if I let it. Uh, obviously, I'd have to keep changing the water on the glycol side, uh, here, on the heat dump side, but I'm not gonna leave it running. Uh, but now we know that it works, all we need to do is put a heat dump in line, and the heat dump doesn't need a pump, but all the pumps are contained within this unit and uh, fill it up with the glycol mix, set it to about minus 12, minus 15 degrees, and then that'll sit as a glycol bath at minus 15 degrees. It'll be throwing its heat out through the heat dump, and it'll be pumping the minus 15 glycol through the other car radiator fans that we're gonna put in the back of the cold room, and then behind those uh, car radiators, there's a fan. I think I just said car radiator fan, you know what I mean. So the car radiator with a fan behind it and the fan will be blowing the cold air around the cold room. The heat dump will be blowing the hot air outside of the building and that will be our source of, uh, that will be our heat pump essentially. That's what this bad boy is. So I'm pretty chuffed. I mean, yeah, yeah, the heat dump's full of light, but you know, we can overcome. We can overcome and we can, yeah, have to make the lid fit as well. But we can definitely make that work. This works. That's cold. So, let's have a look. Let's have a little looky poo. Oh yeah. So it's about 14 degrees in here today. We're down to 9.1 in the water bath. And then in the water tank, Oh my God, it's 50 degrees already in there. So it's all doing its job. It's all working a treat. I'm gonna unplug everything. We're gonna come back tomorrow and uh, we're gonna do a little bit more on this. See how far we can get and uh, maybe talk a little bit more about how it actually works. And before I go, I wanna show you some of the uh, coils that have come out of the chiller. So these are the stainless steel product coils. So the beer will come into this, it'll recirculate through it, 
dumping its heat into the ice bank and then back out it goes to the bar. That's how these work. This one looks like it's been overloaded. Normally they've got like eight or ten in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's 13 in this one and a blanking plate. So they can carry, they can carry 14 by the looks of it. So I'm going to clean all this down tomorrow probably. Break down all these John Guest fittings, pull them apart, soak them. Like I'll literally take everything out. I'll take, there's a little O-ring in there, a retaining clip, uh, the press release, everything will come out. If they're not worth saving, I won't save them. If they are, I will. But these uh, are good to go back into recirculation, particularly if I'm gonna use them on the cooling side. So if I'm gonna use them to recirculate glycol around the new tanks or something like that, I might be able to do it using this. You know, have a pump forcing beer in here through the coils, not beer, glycol in there, through the glycol, and then back out to an individual tank and each tank has its own mind you there's probably not enough surface area there to do that we'll see anyway uh, it's definitely an option but if nothing else I'm gonna have spare stainless steel coils for something or other so yeah it's been a bit of a weird day but you know we're making progress we are getting there a little bit now so it is nice to uh, be able to be moving towards getting this cold room completed and then once that cold room's completed we can start to make a little bit more progress on the tanks um, I've got the rest of this week to be playing around with these little projects I do need to tidy the workshop up um, and then I'm gonna have to get ready for casking on Monday and brewing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week I'm going to be brewing something exciting with all those hops that we picked up. Not sure what it is yet, but if you'd like to tune in for that, make sure you've hit that little subscribe button down there, folks. And other than that, I'm going to see you on tomorrow's vlog, because I'm done here. Cheers. And there she is, the producer of Jerky, indeed. So we've just come back from taking the dog for a walk around Columbia again with the kids. This is a collection of the meat that we made the other day. So there's like six boxes of that here. I've got two boxes at work. It's good stuff. So we're going to tidy this area here and it can probably live there for a little while.